All right, so free response question six. We have that phone caller to the bank's customer service center must wait until a service representative is available to answer the phone call. The bank manager is interested in estimating the main customer wait time. 13 calls were selected at random and a histogram of the 13 wait times and minutes is shown below. Okay, so looking at this histogram, explain why it might not be appropriate to use a one sample T interval to estimate the mean wait time for all customers. Okay, so let's um, remember what the conditions are for being able to use a one sample T interval. And the one condition that this is violating, well, right off the bat, is that you can see that it's clearly skewed. You can see it's clearly skewed to the right. And because the sample size is not at least 30, then we can't, you know, go ahead and proceed with, you know, using this inference method. Because remember, according to the central limit theorem, we want um, the sample size to be at least 30. That's usually what most textbooks will have as their boundary value. Sometimes it's 25, but 30 is the one in my textbook. So if it's not at least 30, we have to look at, we have to, we have to inspect the sample data and check for any, you know, extreme skewness or, you know, like reasonable, you know, evidence to, to say that, hey, this is probably not a normal distribution. And um, yeah, so, so you can see that it's not. Um, so then but that's all you really have to say. So let's just write that out. So it would not be appropriate. Because distribution of weight is clearly skewed to the right. And sample size and equals 13 is small. Now, so a piece of advice when you're writing your answers to um, three response questions, um, try to be efficient. Try not to like drag on with a lot of, you know, dribble dribble. Just, just get kind of straight to the point. Um, so sounds so so like saying writing less is sometimes more. Sometimes better to write less than um, writing more. So be you know be again be, be concise and simple and direct to the point. Okay, let's move on to part B. All right, so here we're given um, a table where we use a little log transformation to transform this data. In this case, the wait times and x represents the customer's wait times that we originally had in the histogram. And the transformation is given by the log of x with base 10. So here are the original 13 wait times on the left and the transform wait times on the right. And here are some stats on that, the mean, standard deviation, and medians. And here's a histogram of the 13 log transform data values. So here's a histogram of these values. Now, here's the, here's the summary statistics for that table again here. And the question is, based on this histogram, it says that the conditions for inference have been met for the log transform data. So let's construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu of the log of the wait times. So this is simply where you're just gonna use a one sample T interval. And you know, the general form for that is you're, you're going to have your sample mean x bar plus or minus your critical value t, t star, times your standard deviation of the sample over the square roots of the sample size n. Now, um, and in your formula packet, you, you don't really get it in that you know, direct form. 
you know, you'll see some, you'll, you'll see a form like this. And it's up to you to decide what is the critical value and what would the standard error be. But again, if you just become very comfortable with this, and if you know how to, you know, for each table, it's kind of given to you, but just in pieces. So you can see the standard error for sample means, you know, is over here. So then you know that's going to be on the, the right part of this. And the T star, that's, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, um, T distributions when estimating population means. Now, the T star value is going to be based on a degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom would be one less than a sample size. So degrees of freedom in this case would be 12. The sample size is 13. So we look at our table for the appropriate 95% confidence interval. Make sure you go to this table, the table B with the distribution. And we go to the row with 12 degrees of freedom. Line it up. And bang, get that 2.179 as your T star. So then our sample mean is the point oh six three oops is the 0 0.0632 plus or minus our T star, which I just showed is a 2.179 times standard deviation. Again, we're talking about the, the log of the wait times. So we're using this column times 0.235 over the square root of 13. Punch that into your calculator, and you're going to get about 0 0.0632 plus or minus 0 0.1420. So the lower bound would be the negative 0 0.0788, and the upper bound is a 0 0.2052. And to interpret it, just use your general um, sentence frame um, for any confidence interval that you're going to interpret. So we'll say something like, you're 95% confident that the mean of the population of log wait times is between negative 0.0788 and 0.2052. Log minutes. Make sure you mention the unit. I don't know how strict they'll be on that, but um, if you leave it without the units, they may, you know, they may drop you some points. So let me just show you. If I don't waste some time, I, I here's the answer if it's not. So see how I wrote on, um, I wrote out log minutes because these are in a different unit. These aren't straight up minutes. These are um, transformed data. Remember, it's you know, it's it's basically ten to that value. But the, these are exponents. But let me, I'll get more to that in the next part because that's going to be key. Okay, so going on to part C, we're given um, that the mean of the log transform data is 0 0.0632 log minutes base 10, which can be converted back to 1.157 minutes by calculating 10 to the 0.0632. Convert the endpoints of your interval in part B that we found back two minutes and write the resultant interval. So again, these are the exponents. Remember in logs. So again, when you're talking about a logarithm, if you if you haven't had too much experience in like pre-calculus or in chemistry, we use logarithms because um they're 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 useful for expressing very large numbers or very small numbers. But the values here are the exponents, or what value you raise the base to to get x. So 10 raised to that equals x. 10 raised to this equals x. So in this case, these are the exponents. So we would raise the left endpoint to this power. So the left endpoint would be 10 to the negative 0 0.0788. And the other endpoint would be 10 to the 
point two oh five two. Using your calculator, you just figure that out. And Ten to the point two oh five two. And those are two values. So our interval would be point eight three four one ish to one point six zero four ish. And this is in minutes, no longer log minutes. No need to write any explanation. Just again, just to just answer the question because it's all it's telling you to do. Part D. Okay, so here we're given um, a graph. Graph one that shows the population distribution of log of the log of wait times and log minutes with the base 10 of log log base 10 minutes. And it's normal with the mean and mu shown here. Graph two shows the result of converting the population distribution in graph one back to the population distribution of wait times and minutes. So like the original, the original um, units we had, minutes, transform units and log minutes. And we, they shade the lower 50% in each graph. Question D is dealing with the parameter 10 to the mu, so 10 to the mean, or the true population mean. And it's asking, how does the parameter 10 to the mu, or 10 to the population mean, compare with the median of the population distribution of wait times? Now, there's two ways to... Um, answer this, or two ways to, let me, let me give you two explanations, two ways to go about this. Um, if it's the median, remember that the 50 percentile mark. So that's the equal areas point. So you can see they're going to be about the same. Um, as far as we can, can, as far as we have in, as far as the decimals and the, and the, and the significant digits mathematically, are allowed that they're going to be essentially the same. Um, so what I what you what I mean is you can you can mathematically calculate this because you can look at the true mean going back to our um, data over here. I'm sorry, the true median. The true median is 0 0.0792 for the log data. 0 0 0.0792 which means that to transform it into here, you would just take 10 to the 0 0.0792, which is gonna give you 1.2005182. You don't have to go that far, but I'm just kind of, I'm writing that to, to get to my, to get to, to emphasize the point um, that I was talking about in terms of significant digits. Again, it doesn't matter. You could just go 1.20 and you'll be fine. But um, now going back, if you look, the median is the same. The median is 1.20. So that's what I mean by mathematically that they're the same. Median, the median wait time is equal to 1.2 minutes. They are, you can say, so they are equal. Now, in part two, how does the parameter 10 in the mu compare with the mean of the population distribution of wait times? Now, again, two ways to answer this. You can look graphically that since this is skewed to the right, remember the mean gets pulled towards the tail. So, you know, the, even though this will be the median here, equal areas point, but I, I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying the mean is exactly here, but the mean has to be somewhat to the, somewhere to the right of the median because it's being uh, affected by the, by the skewness. So it gets pulled, you know, towards the tail. So the mean here is greater 
and um, or you could say that that the uh, mean um, of this is going to be less. But let me just show this mathematically again. Um, going back to the data, we can see that the mean of the log is 0 0.0632. So mu is 0 0.0632. And when we take 10 to the, again, the 10 to the 0 0.0632, that's going to be about 0.0632. But if you go back and find and look at the actual mean wait time, you can see it's 1.31. So see how it's more? Mean wait time is 1.31. So this one is greater. The mean here again, this is, um, well, you could say 1.31. So then um, it's again, it's effect, that's just, again, the two ways to answer the same question, um, whatever, I just wanna make sure you understand it, but you don't even have to go through this. You don't even have to actually show this. As long, you, you just can simply say as your answer is that the population or the, the parameter tend to use less than the mean of the population of wait times. So let me just write it out what an acceptable answer would be. So you write the parameter, tend to mu is less than, than the mean of the population of wait times. And again, you don't you only I'm just showing this work just to explain it to you. It's not actually necessary to get full credit on this problem. If you have this, um, that that's gonna be enough. Now, um, party, this is pretty straightforward, right? An interpretation of the interval you can strike in part C. And all you really have to make sure that you um um alter or change from your previous common interval is that you're talking about the median of the population of wait times longer. So yeah, the, the, this is the median of the population of wait times. That's it, that's all that's really different. So just I have it written down right here, my own words, so but this will. So you say we are 95% confident that the median of the population of wait times is between that 0.834 and 1.604. So nothing really tricky there. They're just trying to make sure you um, know what that, what those values represent. Those values represent um, medians versus means. Okay, well, I hope that helps. I hope that explanation wasn't too long. Um, but let me know. Let me know if you need any clearing up or anything I can do to help improve my, you know, solutions. So good luck.